Okay, if you have questions on problems 59 through about 63, this video will help you. Um, with 59, at four couch, t-shirts sell for $17.56 and cost $12.01 to produce. Which equation represents P, the profit, in terms of X, the number of t-shirts sold? So they're telling you how much it costs to make one t-shirt and how much they can sell the one t-shirt for, but they're going to be selling and making X number of t-shirts. Remember that profit is equal to, you know, your income or what comes in from your sales after you take away the cost, right? You have to pay for how much it costs to make something. So, you know, if you sell a t-shirt for $10, but it costs the company $3 to make it, your profit would be the 10 minus the three or the $7 that you made after paying the cost. That's the same thing here. So think about how much are they making, how much money would they be making off of all the t-shirts? Well, they've been making $17.56 for each shirt or $17.56 times X. $17.56 times the number of shirts would give me the total amount of money they would bring in. But then they have to pay for $12.01 $12 per shirt to produce it. So remember that per or that for each signifies you to multiply, and you would do 1201 and multiply it by x. So we could subtract these and combine the like terms, but when you're taking a multiple choice test, you also want to look at what's there and look at what your answer looks like. If we were to subtract these and get like 1555, or sorry, 555x, that's not an option. So look at which option matches yours, but is in a different form. Well, this one has an x, on the, but this one doesn't. So I would say that's not the same. You know, those aren't equivalent at all. This one over here, and it's a plus. We really don't want a plus. This one over here, okay, we have the 17.56x but we don't have the X on the t-shirt, so I would say that's not the same. Now look at D and B. There's something interesting about D and B. It's like the X has not been distributed yet. So technically these would both have an X. One of them matches your answer. It's B, because this would be the subtraction, and this would be equivalent to what you wrote. Number 60, if you struggle with 60, here we go. The population of a small town, P, as a function of time, T, in years past 1940 is this. So P is the population, and T is the time since 1940. That's going to be really important. In what year will the population be this? Well, since population is P, all I'm going to do is put in 16736 for P. After you substitute that in, solve for T. Remember that T is the time in years past 1940. So isolate your variable by undoing order of operations. You can use a calculator here. And what we're going to get is that T equals 39. Now remember, what does T stand for? T stands for 39 years past 1990, or 1940, excuse me. So the question asks me, in what year will the population be that amount? Well, it's going to be that amount in 39 years past 1940. What year will that be? We'll add 39 to 1940 and find out. Your answer is 1979. Correct answer is A. And number 61, Alex is flying 2,075 miles. The table below shows the number of miles left to go after each hour of travel. So this is the total amount. After one hour, he has 1,881 miles left. After two hours, he has this much left. So we can see what's happening to the miles, right? Over time, it's decreasing. If Alex continues at this current rate, how many miles will he have remaining after traveling seven hours? 
So you basically want to extend this table out. We have up to four hours. What if we could find out up to five, up to six, and then up to seven? This is your answer when you find it. Anytime you're given a table, I, I always start by looking for a pattern. Look for like a constant change. So you can see that the hours are going up by one. And what are the miles doing? Well, I would plug those into my calculator to figure out what the difference is. Uh, I didn't add a number because it got smaller, so I probably took away a number. Do this minus this, and you'll see that it's subtracting 194 each hour. So basically, the plane is flying 194 miles per hour. This pattern continues on when you check it, so just keep going. Put 12.99 in your calculator and take away 194. Figure out what's going to be right there. Then do it again, then do it again, and that will lead you to your answer. So using your calculator, I can see that this is 1,105 miles left, then 911 miles left, then 717 miles left. The correct answer then is D. Number 62, which of the following function matches the graph? Remember with an equation, we can always look for the y-intercept and we can always count the slope. So look for the y-intercept first. That's going to be right here. So that's your b value. b must be that negative 1, 2. Then count your rise over your run. So Find an exact point, then find another exact point. So this one's not perfectly on the meeting of the grid lines. Ah, there's one. And there's another one. Count how many are rising and how many are running. Up one, two, over one, two, three. Let's see if that's the same thing over here. Up one, two, over one, two, three. So your slope is a positive two over three. You're going up two and to the right three. Your equation should be 2 thirds x minus 2. We can see our correct answer here is b. So if you're struggling with this, make sure you look back at the book and study slope intercept 4. 63, which of the following table corresponds to the graph below? Well, find some points on the graph and see, or actually here's what I would do. I would look for some differences between the table and then see, and see between the tables and then see which point is correct on the graph. For instance, when I look at the first two, I see a big difference right here. So I would look first to see, okay, is 0, 0 a point on the graph or 0, negative 2 thirds a point on the graph? If when x is 0, y is 0. So automatically a, a has been removed. It cannot be the correct answer. All right, well then look for a difference between b and c. So these are the same, these are the same. Here's your difference right here. Find out which point is correct. When x is negative 1, is y a positive or negative 1 third? Go over to x being negative 1. Did you go up or down from here? You went down. So it should be a negative 1 third. That rules c out, which also rules d out. So your correct answer is b. Let's keep going. 64. Which of the following situations represents a linear relationship? Remember that with linear, you're looking for a constant change in x corresponding to a constant change in y. So the change is constant, okay? It has to change at the same rate. A radioactive substance loses half of its mass every 12 years. Well, you could kind of think about if you just started one, started a value. Let's say the mass was 100, right? And after 12 years, what would happen to that? Well, 100 would go down to 50 if it became half of it. After another 12 years, what would happen to that? Well, half of 50 is 25. And you could keep going with this. But if this was going to be linear, there would have to be a constant change. Find the differences between these numbers, it should be the same. Well, 100 minus 50, we took away 50 to get there. 
but then 50 to 25, we took away 25. So that is not a constant change. A is not linear. The cost of living increases in a certain area by 3% each year. So think about it. The first year, maybe the cost of living is $100. And if it increases by 3%, we would do 100 times 0 0.03. That would give me 103 now. Then the next year, this new number would increase again by 0 0.03. So is that going to be a constant rate? No, it's changing each year and it's starting at a different amount. So that is also not linear. The volume of a cubic gift box de depends on the side length of the box or someone is losing five pounds every month on her diet. C might be kind of hard for you to think about, but let's think about D. Someone is losing five pounds every month so they're taking away five pounds for each month. If you graph that, would that be linear? Yes. There's a constant change that's happening. This is happening every single month. So even if you couldn't figure out how to rule out C, D is your correct answer. All right, 65. A pizza buffet has prepared 18 pizzas to place on the line at the beginning of the lunch at 11 a.m. The equation for y equals 14x plus 18 can be, written, can be used to describe the total number of pizzas that have been placed out on the buffet line. Now read this part carefully because this is what they're telling you. This is really important. Where x represents every 9 minutes after 11 a.m. So this 14x, x represents every 9 minutes after 11 a.m. Remember, when you're multiplying a number by a variable, that's like for each or per. So there's 14 per every nine minutes. 14 what? Well, what are we talking about? We're talking about the number of pizzas that have been placed out on the buffet line. So this 14 represents the pizzas, okay? This is a rate, guys. This slope is always a rate. So this is your slope, this is your y-intercept, the 14 represents 14 pizzas per nine minutes. Well, you think about it, it says which statement best describes the rate of change? Well, every nine minutes, 14 pizzas go, that goes out. Well, that's definitely not C because this is 24. If your rate isn't there, look for one that's equivalent. I see 18 minutes. So if this was going to be equal to something over 18 minutes, what would it have to be? Notice what you do on the bottom, you would do to the top. The way I got 18 is I multiplied 9 by 2. Try that on the top. 14 times 2 is 28. So Every 18 minutes, 28 more pizzas were set out is equivalent to the same, to your rate of every 9 minutes, 14 pizzas is set out. The correct answer there is B.